TikTok has been a mess this week. And I'm not even gonna talk about Maya's life because I wasn't there for the full thing. I wanna talk about what's been happening with us in general because what happened on that live is just the microcosm of the macrocosm. Before I even start, let me just make it very clear that I'm both black and Palestinian. And by black, I mean raised by an African father in West Africa and spent the rest of my adult years in Brooklyn before it got gentrified and also in the DNV. With the exception of the four years that I spent in occupied Palestine, I have only lived in black spaces, countries, or neighborhoods. The only reason I'm giving this ridiculous intro is because whenever I, as a biracial person, says something that a few black people may not agree with, I get told that I'm not black enough and I'm not American black, and therefore I cannot speak on black American issues. Meanwhile, these are the same people that will go ahead and defend Kamala's non-existent American blackness all because she went to a HBCU because she couldn't get into an Ivy League school, but I digress. I'm gonna start with Palestinians because everyone who isn't black needs to learn how to deconstruct anti-blackness within themselves. And that's before you can even think about talking about deconstructing systems. Start with that shit in yourself because a lot of Arabs have that. Palestinians are a little different from the rest of Arabs because we have always stood in solidarity with black liberation movements, but that does not mean that some of y'all still don't hold these weird beauty standards or anti-black sentiments because I've seen it myself, right? So if that's what you're doing on this app, please cut it out. You are doing no service to this movement whatsoever. With that said, I do not think that the predominant attitude I'm seeing from Palestinians towards black people is anti-black. I think it is frustration and very, very deep, deep disappointment. And the reason why this frustration seems to be mostly focused on black people right now, even though black people aren't responsible for the system, is because black people are the ones celebrating Kamala the most right now. The same person who has pledged unconditional loyalty, support, and allegiance to the people who are killing us. It is one thing to want to vote for Harris simply because you don't want Trump to win. As much as I can't rock with that, I can understand that. Okay, I can understand that. But it's a completely different thing when you start defending this woman as if you know her and attacking other people who are trying to tell you the truth about her and making you very aware that this doesn't change anything for Palestine. That is a completely different stance and that's what makes this whole conversation problematic. If you don't want Trump to win, then just say that and leave it at that, full stop. Do not start defending this woman. Because when you start defending this woman and also you know, bringing in her blackness as if that means anything, as if she's gonna do anything for black people or as if there's a possibility to push her left, which I, I highly doubt by the way, when you start doing things like that, you're insulting Palestinians. Not just the ones who are alive reading your comments, but the ones who have died. It, it's almost like we have learned nothing about the system and Democrats in the last 10 months. And please, please, for the love of God, do not bring Palestinians into this mess. Do not say you are voting for Kamala because you want to help Palestinians because we all know that's not going to help us. We know this. We're just not sure how you don't know that and why you're using our cause to justify your reason to vote for her. It is insulting. We are witnessing the worst thing that has ever happened to our people under her administration. And you have the audacity. It's like, I feel like people just don't even think about what they post online and then get offended and shocked by the responses they get. And you can keep using this weird illogical analogy that you're putting your oxygen mask on before helping others. But please remember that you're not the one watching your loved ones getting blown up to pieces and handed to you in a plastic bag. Let that sink in for a second, because I think we're normalizing what's happening in Gaza a little too much. Like, I don't think you guys really understand what danger is. And I don't care how much compassion and sympathy you feel for Palestinians, you will never know what it feels like. You will never understand the level of trauma we're all collectively going through. So please remember that when speaking to Palestinian people. That's all I ask. Please remember that. We're not always going to be perfect. Shit, we are not perfect. And anger can make people act in very funny ways. Shit, I've been acting out of character since October. Okay, that I have not been normal since this genocide has started. It, it's taking everything within our willpower to stay calm and composed 
and rational and and just here to keep educating people and keep raising awareness. It's taking everything out of us to do this. So when you're sitting here complaining about being tone policed for being black, which really it's not about you being black, it's about you supporting a war criminal. Remember that you're also tone policing Palestinians for their reaction to how they perceive betrayal or disappointment. Just remember that. Lastly, being born in this body, in this black and female body, I've had my full share of anti-blackness and tone policing. But I think there's a difference between tone policing and being held accountable for shit that you say online, especially after publicly announcing that you're part of a movement. And again, I'm not talking about the Maya live. This is bigger than that live. This is what I'm seeing all over TikTok. And this is what a lot of you TikTok folks are not ready for, accountability. Because quiet as kept, a lot of you are here for yourselves. You just like hearing yourselves talk. And that's why I fell back from TikTok and stopped posting regularly because I started seeing that this is like an ego battle for y'all. This is not a game to us. This is real life. Okay? And whether you like it or not, this movement is radical. Okay? Anti-colonial movements are radical by nature. It, it, it just, that's just how it works. I'm sorry. And that comes with strong principles that you have to adhere to. Otherwise, you just keep getting sucked back into the system. So people are going to call you out. People are going to do that. Me, as a Palestinian, as a Black person, I've posted comments and videos and had other Palestinians call me out on them. Or other decolonization activists call me out on them and tell me, yo, sis, this is not a good take. This is not it. This is actually harmful in so-and-so way. Delete this shit. And as much as I wanted to be defensive, I had to sit back and listen. Because that's what being part of a movement means. You listen to each other. And my question to people who are complaining about all this tone policing is, are you even listening to other Black people? What about the thousands, if not millions, of Black people who are not going to vote for Harris? Are you listening to them? Are you listening to Black activists? Are you listening to other Black scholars and intellectuals? Ismatu Gwendolyn, oh my goodness, if you have not checked out her work, please do. She is amazing at deconstructing white supremacy. Shauna, another one, I hope I'm saying her name right. Are you listening to Black women? Are you even reading and listening to Malcolm X, Angela Davis, France Fanon? So before you accuse others of anti-blackness or not listening to you, ask yourself if you're listening to black voices and important black voices at that.